People keep asking me, why do you hate Philips Hue so much? And I'm not gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so the ambient light of this room is measuring around 5.3, 5.2 lux. And we're gonna switch on the car bulb first on its coldest white setting. And we should be able to see about 436-ish lux. So we're now going to do the same thing for the Philips Hue bulb on its coldest white setting. <laughs> 170. Well done, Phillips. Well done indeed. Gosh, it's still dropping. 166.5. That's poor. And these bulbs not only crap all over Phillips Hue for brightness and saturation, but they're also dual protocol. Hey, they've got Zigbee and thread in them. And I'll tell you why in a minute that that matters. See what it did there? It matters. They come in bulb shape and spotlight shape, but more importantly, possibly than the light bulb is the fact that Akara have also released their new light switch, which also has both Zigbee and Thread built into it. Uh, relay switch, relay switch, wireless switch, wireless switch. Aha! So these at the top will turn your lights on and off traditional way um, and could be added to Amazon Alexa, Google Home or Apple HomeKit and these are wireless switches and they are able to start routines in the Akara app so they're interesting. So this is kind of exciting I have got it now connected to Home Assistant using my Apple HomePod as the thread border router and if I click these buttons I can use them in routines. So Home Assistant has access to these buttons which is awesome and of course I can turn the individual lights on and off too. That's exciting, and that makes me think I need to install this now. I might actually go and put this in my house. This video is sponsored by Akara, but as well as all the good things about this device, I'm gonna tell you all the bad things too. Of course my phone is connected to Wi-Fi, you son of a bitch. It's right there, dude. It's right there. Connect, connect. Unable to add accessory. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, why would it be able to add it? What a ridiculous concept! It gets pretty bad. Akara finally do a whole bunch of light bulbs that they're calling the Akara T2. Strictly true, is it? Could you uh, just toss the sequels in as well? Just do us all a favour. Terminator franchise was ruined. So, to the uninitiated, if you're wondering what it means that these products have both Zigbee and Thread built into them, basically, because it has Zigbee, it will work with a Philips Hue hub, it will work with Samsung SmartThings, it will work with Hubitat, it will work with Homey, and it will work with Home Assistant if you have a Zigbee dongle, such as a Conbee stick. But because it's Thread, it will also work directly with anything that has a Thread border router. This not only includes Amazon Echoes, Google Home speakers, Apple HomePod minis and Apple HomePods, and basically anything that claims to be a Thread border router with Matter enabled. And perhaps you're thinking to yourself, why does that matter, Paul? Well, the answer to that question is that not only does it mean you can switch between ecosystems should you one day decide you've had enough of Jeff Bezos's little rabbity friend, or you've had enough of Google Home's endless garbage, so you can take these things with you to a new ecosystem. It's entirely future-proofed, but more importantly than that, probably to a lot of people, is the fact that it all operates locally because it's thread, or locally because it's Zigbee, if you're using it on a local Zigbee hub. And this means that there is no cloud element. You can actually set this thing up without even using the Akara app. I can connect this device directly to my Amazon Echo without opening an Akara app. I can connect it directly to a Google Home speaker. I can connect it directly to Home Assistant, Samsung SmartThings, Hubitat, Homey, anything that claims to have a thread hub. So if you have a tinfoil hat on right now, you'll probably take it off. What, and have Jeff Bezos watch me through my light bulb? I don't bloody think so! Yes, Jeff Bezos is watching you pee. He probably is. So why do I hate Philips Hue? Well, aside from the fact that this thing costs 20 pounds more than this thing, minimum, and is underperforming this thing in almost every single one of my tests, 
Here is Mr. Sulky to explain exactly why I hate Philip's Hue. They're a bunch of pricks! Mr. Sulky, you can't say that on television. They're a bunch of unscrupulous pricks! That's right, boys and girls. They're a bunch of unscrupulous pricks. Look up the Phoebus Cartel. They've been at it for over a hundred years. In complete seriousness, Philips Hue once decided they would kill off their smart home hub so that you would have to buy their latest smart home hub just so they could make it work with Apple HomeKit, even if you didn't use Apple HomeKit. They actually killed it from across the internet, made it entirely pointless and we all had to put it in a bin. I can't factory reset this bulb. So even though I bought it originally for Philips Hue and later on decided I wanted to use it with Hobbitat or Homey or Home Assistant, I can't reset it because I don't have a Philips Hue remote. Instead of being able to turn it on and off 10 times to put it into factory pairing mode, you have to buy a Philips Hue product to put it into factory pairing mode. What kind of bullshit is that? But most importantly of all, and the thing that really winds me up, is the fact that Philips Hue users will tell you It just works! It just works! It just works! It just works! Does it? Not my experience. I, I have a Philips Hue LED strip in that wardrobe right now with a dead LED in it for absolutely no reason. And I have a five quid LED strip in this cabinet behind me that is brighter than the Philips Hue LED strip that I got off Amazon that has been in that cabinet for about 10 years. What do you think about Philips Hue, Paul, from the past? Garbage, mate. Yeah. We finally agree on something. Here to explain all about exactly what the light switch is, what it does, and how it works is Paul from the past. Take it away, Paul from the past, you dickhead. We don't get on. We've never got on. So this is an ordinary bulb, this is a smart bulb, it's actually a car bulb we've been testing today. And this light switch is, uh, is not what we want because we want to have smart control over this and we want this to not get its power cut every time somebody does this because if they do, this thing will keep factory resetting. So we're going to replace this with a smart light switch. Akara. 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 A car. A car. Happened to do one, as already discussed. So this is the switch we're going to replace it with. All we've got to do is get these cables swapped about. So we turn the power off at the mains. So go and do that before you do anything. And you test with a multimeter to make sure it's definitely off before you do out. Otherwise, you'll die. Okay, that shouldn't have happened. So now it's all powered up, I should be able to connect this to basically any thread-based device, but for testing purposes, I'm going to connect it to my Apple HomePod Mini. Uh, we're just going to hit plus button, add accessory, and then uh, more options, and I should be able to see it. Car light switch H2. That's for a setup code, and I think this is worth bearing in mind, right? If you lose this manual, you'll have to get the code from inside this light switch. I think it's stamped in there. If not, you'd be real scuppered. So, I, yeah, worthy of note. So, I need this code here. 1241-700-2280. Continue. That's a light, apparently. There we go, programmable switch location. We're gonna stick that in uh, the ready room. Hee hee! Turning on that switch there, like, that's cool, isn't it? Let's turn on that one. Absolutely awesome. Booyah! Did the, the kids still say booyah? How do you do, fellow kids? So this is kind of exciting. I have got it now connected to Home Assistant using my Apple HomePod as the thread border router, and if I click these buttons, I can use them in routines. So Home Assistant has access to these buttons, which is awesome, and of course I can turn the individual lights on and off too. That's exciting, and that makes me think I need to install this now. I might actually go and put this in my house. So this light switch doesn't require a neutral wire, which is awesome if you live in the UK because most of us don't have one at the light switch. If you have a back box deep enough for this thing, because it is quite chunky. That's got a big old butt. Three centimeters exactly. Or if you're an American, one and a half freedom units. Freedom is in free. It calls folks like you and me.
Then you'll be able to fit this yourself really, really easily. It's just a few wires that you're swapping out like for like. And as I've already said, this light switch, just like the light bulb, works with your Amazon Echo directly, your Google Home Hub directly, and your Apple HomePod Mini directly without any requirement for the Acara ecosystem whatsoever. There is just one caveat. And that is, the two little buttons at the bottom can't be programmed to do anything at all without the Acara ecosystem. And this brings us on to the elephant in the room. Yeah, come on in. Yeah. You want, you're, here, you, you're here this week, it's fine. So, <laughs> the light bulb is awesome. I can't fault it in any way, shape, or form. It's brighter than Philips Hue. Uh, it connects to all of your different ecosystems. It doesn't require a car if you don't want to use a car, but it does work with a car's ecosystem if you do want it to. It has Zigbee and Thread, so it can connect to literally anything. The light switch is also absolutely awesome. If you just want to replace a two gang light switch with something that can be controlled using your face hole, it's genius. If you want to use it in Home Assistant, it's absolutely awesome if, <laughs> if you can get it connected to Home Assistant. I haven't tried the Sky Connect using Thread, I don't have one. If you want to use your Amazon Echo, it doesn't work for some reason. I, I can't use my Amazon Echo as the Thread border router to connect it to Home Assistant. Why? I have literally no idea. If you're scratching your head again going, why do you need an Amazon Echo to connect it to Home Assistant? Again, it's a thread border router required to connect this thing to Home Assistant, and the Amazon Echo is a thread border router. They can all talk together, and it should be able to connect it into Home Assistant. I can get it connected to Home Assistant using my HomePod Mini to act as a thread border router. That works just fine. I also got it connected with my Google speaker to Home Assistant. Everything in that regard works fine. For some reason, the Amazon Echo won't connect it to Home Assistant. If you were hoping it would, it doesn't. You might be thinking, I'll use it in Home Assistant using Zigbee, and you can. But then you can only control the light switches, you can't get access to the individual buttons at the bottom. So the two little scene buttons that you might want to use for starting routines in Home Assistant are only accessible if you connect it via thread, and you can only connect it via thread if you have an Apple HomePod Mini, currently as of time of filming. If any of this changes, I shall let you know in the description, so go check down there. In a similar vein, you have four buttons on this thing, the top two are the light switches, the bottom two you can't do anything with unless you connect it to the Acara ecosystem or into Home Assistant as I've just described. You can't use them to start Alexa routines, which I figured I'd be able to, and that's a real shame, and you can't use them in Apple HomeKit either to start routines there. So I, I mean, they're kind of pointless unless you connect them to either the Acara ecosystem or you connect via thread to Home Assistant. With all that said, Thread and Matter as a communication protocol for smart homes is constantly evolving, and you will find that these things will at some point do absolutely everything you want them to do, and will use whatever Thread border router you like. As of time of filming, it's a little bit awkward, but I actually have all the things required to go and plumb this light switch in personally, I'm going to, because it's really, really cool. It looks nice, and it has those scene buttons that means I can start routines in Home Assistant. The light bulb, is gorgeous. It's got 16 million colors as you'd expect, but it also has the tunable white, and the tunable white is so good. You can do everything from daylight to warm white to cold white, and it is far brighter than Philips Hue will ever be. And at the end of the day, Philips Hue don't even do a light switch. Idiots. I mean, they, they kind of do. But it's garbage. As usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick up either of these devices. So all that's left to do is to thank my patrons, who honestly, without them, I wouldn't be doing this for a living. If you want to be like these guys, or like JJ, who I'm thanking personally this week, you can do that at either Patreon, or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my X's, my threads, my Instagrams, and my TikToks. Coming out there, we can be best friends. See you next time. I did it right! I got, I got the end right! Amazing! <laughs> It's called a T2, the bulb is called a T2. It's a funny, funny joke. Terminator franchise was ruined.